What is up guys? Today is finally the day that I can talk about this shit. Um, I'm switching tunes. Frank Mabo from Mabo Tech. He's sponsoring me slash the channel. Um, I'm super hyped on that. Now, it's not like uh, United Motorsports is a bad tune or, or anything that really has to do with their tune in general. It's um, ease of access really and convenience. And of course being sponsored is another reason why I'm switching. But uh, sorry, the dog. The dog here wants to play. Drop it. Drop it. Oh, threw it in the water bowl. Damn. Anyway, um, Frank hit me up in my DMs and we talked for a couple days and he wanted to sponsor, you know, this, that, and the other. We got to talking. I wound up buying the cable and uh, purchasing some tunes. Um, I'm actually going to get him here on the phone here in a minute to talk to you guys. But the main reason for me switching is that United More Sport, Sports, they're two nearest dealers um, that are the one nearest one I was told to stay away from, so I'm not doing that. So basically the two nearest ones, one's nine hours, one's like six hours, and I'd have to, they, they don't tune on the weekends. United Motorsports doesn't. So I'd have to take off two separate Fridays because my turbo's not here yet and my fuel system's going in next weekend. We have autocross this weekend. Next weekend our fuel system is going in. And I'd have to go back again another weekend to do the uh, to do the turbo, and then I would need to like purchase dyno time to send logs to Frank and them to get the tune dialed in properly. And it's already like eleven hundred dollars to upgrade tunes, and then you got to add in all that labor, and then taking off work and gas. It's a lot of freaking money. I saved a lot of money by going this route. And I get custom tunes. I just don't have flex fuel. I don't have flex fuel now, so it's not like it really matters. Um, I'll still have the flex sensor. I can wire that to my P3, so I at least know my ethanol content. Um, but that's like pretty much my main reasons for switching. They they have Eurodyne has launch control. They have no lift shift. They even have um, a couple other nifty little things that we'll be able to play with. So I'm super stoked. I'm super super stoked. Like I said, the fuel system's going in next weekend. Finally. Like, no bullshit. Um, it was supposed to be going in this weekend, but autocross um, got pushed back from last weekend to this weekend. I didn't have enough time last weekend to get it done. So it kind of messed everything up in terms of planning. But, uh, so this weekend, we got autocross. Next weekend, fuel system. And that whole week, we'll be going back and forth with tunes, um, or revisions of tunes, and all that. I'll be going through that whole process with you guys, um, showing times and, and drivability and, and all that stuff on the street and of course at the drag strip. I'm going on the drag strip this Saturday as well so we'll be able to compare um, stock turbo versus stock turbo with port injection and then again with the turbo whenever it decides to show up. But I'm going to text Frank here, get him on the phone and uh, have a few words with him. Alright guys, we got Frank here on the phone. Get a little uh, Q&A for you guys here. All right. How's it going, Frank? Hey, what's up, man? How's everything? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, nice. Yeah. All right, man. I got a few questions for you. I figured the viewers would like a little one-on-one uh, -on -one here, so. Sure, man. Shoot. All right. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, how old you are, how long you've been doing this. born and raised in the Dominican Republic by uh, European parents. I, uh, I started working and modding uh, my toys when I was like seven or eight years old. And since then, you know, it's been a, a roller coaster ride of doing it. And my first uh, Volkswagen Audi vehicle was a Skoda, so believe it or not. Here in the Dominican Republic, we have both Skoda and Seat which is a Spanish brand for the Volkswagen Audi group. Right. We have yeah. four uh, Volkswagen, Audi, Skoda, and Seat. So my first vehicle was a Skoda, a 1.9 TDI, Octavia. Uh, that cool. was back in 2000. And uh, I mean, the car was okay at first, uh, but eventually <laughs> it was uh, played with significant amount of things. And it became 
one trip after another to the dealership, and every time we went there, it was very, very expensive. Oh, Not yeah. to mention time consuming and all that stuff. So basically out of necessity, because of a lack of specialized technicians in the Dominican Republic, I started working on my own vehicles. I studied systems engineering, so um, by trade, right? Right. Um, and I've been sort of tuning and working on vehicles, uh, friends' vehicles, my own vehicles, for the last 10 years. Damn. And I've been doing it full-time internationally since 2016 under, under the Mabel Tech tuning brand. I speak three languages, uh, well, two and a half, <laughs> and, and, but I work seven days a week. I work the whole day. I, I, I've scheduled my life, in a sense, where I can uh, uh, spend time with my family and at the same time work. So, uh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a little taxing, but at the same time, it's extremely rewarding. Damn. Hell yeah. Seven hour or seven days a week, 15 hours a day. Sometimes, some, sometimes I do more. Sometimes I just say F it and not uh, do, I don't know, like maybe I do half a day because I have to do some stuff or I, or I just feel tired or whatever. It usually doesn't happen that way, but um, it's good to have that um, uh option you know that, right. that i mean remember that i live in a tropical island in the middle of the caribbean so to go to the beach probably one of the best beaches in the world is just about 40 minutes away so <laughs> so uh if my family wants to do that on a on a weekday to avoid the extreme crowds of the weekends i can sometimes do that you know right um if, if the workload is only behind the scene with production teams or whatever, and I don't have to too many things with customers, I can inform the active customers that I'm gonna be out for the rest of the day or half a day or whatever, and I can just do that, you know? It's a, it's a, it keeps the, the, the train flowing. Right, yeah. Next question here, let's see. Uh, what, what, do you, what is your, uh, what's your favorite part about tuning or designing hardware or, or any of that? Well, um, <clears throat> obviously I enjoy every part of the development process. I, I, I enjoy it so much. It honestly, sincerely feels like I have my own private Disney World and I get excited on every setup I start working. Um, even, even when we start setting out the roadmap for, for, to reach the goals, because that's important. When you start a process, when you start a project with your vehicle, you want to know your ultimate goals. You don't want to start throwing money at it without, you know, without knowing where you're going. Okay, right. you end up spending a lot more and probably not getting what you what you ultimately desired. So it's important to set your your roadmap for your goals at the beginning. There are always uh, issues that might arise. But even that, when you solve them, it's extremely re rewarding. And I think that the thing that I love the most is when, when I reach the goals, uh, satisfactory and successfully, and then, you know, the customer enjoys his car. He's, he's an active customer or th that, that races autocross, drag race, do videos, likes to go to the dyno, actively doing what he loves you know right not right. not 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 somebody that doesn't do that parking lot queens <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right uh what's your what's your least part about least favorite part about tuning oh <laughs> now i i could go on for a while with things that i find disappointing Obviously, uh, failures are one of the things that nobody likes, but you have to realize that stock engine and stock turbos on stock tunes fail or wear out from time to time. And when you stress the system, even by just adding horsepower, even if you do it the right way with the fail safe and all the precautions you can, you can do, you can have, um, the, the stress and fatigue on components is significantly higher. So the rate which those components could fail 
is also significantly higher. So uh, another thing is a, a non-negotiable, unrealistic goal. We right. have a guy that is uh, has read in two forums that he can make 600 horsepower from 91 octane on a stock engine. <laughs> but, I, but I saw on a forum that a guy did on a dyno and he's been running it for two years, according to him. And, you know, it's like, yeah, four-cylinder car with 600 horsepower on 91 octane, it's unrealistic. Yeah, I mean, that's not happening. <laughs> anything can, can be done with enough money um, within some certain limitations, but the goals have to be realistic. You have to, be, you have to, be, you have to know exactly what you're getting and what you're not getting. You know, um, it's. Uh, I think the most the most disappointing thing um, in this, in, if, at least from my perspective, is when you work extremely hard on a setup. Let's say you have a guy that has your vehicle. Uh, I think it's a seven R, right? Yep. Um, and let's say that he wants five hundred and fifty horsepower, and he wants it to be under this, this, and that condition. And we propose hardware and modifications, and we design the setup, the guy does the setup perfectly, everything goes as it should, some, even if the issues, uh, some issues or, or whatever happens, we fix it and everything is fine then. Um, after months of reaching the goal, and then finally the project is done, you get, uh, there are different kinds of, of, of disappointing uh, statements, but one of those are, oh man, the car is awesome, man. I thank you so much, Frank, this is awesome. And then two weeks later, yeah, I'm gonna sell the car because I want a, a S3 or I want a Mustang or I wanna get a Corvette or some, some other project to start building it from the ground up and adding turbochargers or whatever. So it's kind of disappointing that you spend so many months working on that particular setup or project only to, to, to have the guy sell the car because he wants to continue building another project. It's like they just love or like to build projects, not to enjoy them. Right, yeah. And yep, yep. the other thing is, similarly, when you have a goal, let's say 500 horsepower, and when we go to the dyno, we have 510, 520. So it, we actually did more than, we reached the goal and then a little some, a little some more. Right. So... Uh, Immediately, not even fresh, fresh off the dyno, though it's still hot. Um, he says, "Like Frank, hey, uh, when, what, what, what is our next step to get another horsepower, another hundred horsepower, or what's the next step to add more horsepower now?" What? I'm like, <laughs> you're not gonna enjoy your car. You're not gonna have fun with it. We've been at it for months. Right. You already reach your goals, and now you're setting new goals. I understand. Obviously, this is a journey, and you want to continue. But while you are on the journey, you have to enjoy the, the, the ride. I think, at least from my perspective, I think that you should enjoy your ride. Absolutely. You know? Go to the drag strip, go do something. Like <laughs> Exactly, exactly. There's, there's another kind of situation where we have goals, right? We reach them. And then uh, one month, two months, six months, a year, and you ask the guy, I mean, sometimes you, you say hi to him or something, and he's like, yeah, I'm busy with work and stuff. Okay, okay, I understand. Um, but then a year goes by, and you say, you ask, bro, what's going on, man? Have you ever, have you, I mean, are you going to a drag strip? Are you going to a, to a track? Are you going to a cross, autocross event? Are you going, yeah, I mean, are you going to do something? I might go to the dyno to confirm that the numbers are still there a year later. Okay, perfect. What are you doing with the car? I mean, what's going on? No, nah, man, I'm just commuting, going from point A to point V. Terrible. And I'm like, okay, so you, you build a car that has five, 600 horsepower only to have barred conversations about horsepower? Or, you know, yeah. what are you going to do with it? So it's, it's very disappointing. Obviously, sure, I mean, the customer paid and... Everything all and all that, maybe even tipped, but this is not this is not about money. I mean, this is not just about money. Obviously, I do this for a living. I have to provide for my family, but I I love what I do. I'm very passionate 
uh, 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 of, of the way that I work, of what I do, and 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 you know the the, the time and effort I put on every setup I, I get my hands on. So uh, I think uh, that covers it. Yeah, yeah, I can. I know numerous people that fall into those categories too, and it it aggravates me, and I'm not even the tuner, so I can imagine how much it annoys you. <laughs> All right, well. Uh, Get to the end here. Anything specific you want uh, the viewers to know? Um, well, uh, I think I've already said this, but uh, we we work very hard to deliver to deliver uh, the best customer experience with uh, the best products we can provide. I I like the approach where the better quality, the better the product, the better the result. Right better publicity, least amount of customer support, least amount of time I have to invest. Um, and each month we improve, I think each day, but let's say each month we improve things while adding new products, revisions. Uh, the, the, the current product lineup is, is getting, you know, new stuff all the time and then even with the, the current products are usually getting some revisions and improvements. Right. Um, so I think it's important to keep checking out uh, the Marble Tech Tuning Facebook group or, uh, I mean, I'm not too into Instagram, but I'm, I'm going to start doing a, lot, a little bit more social media stuff. Um, we are now expanding a new warehouse, which has taken a lot more time and a lot more effort out of me that I that would would thought um i think i got it bigger than that i should have <laughs> but now that i'm here i'm just gonna you know keep grinding at it and uh make it happen so so things are coming that are going to be extremely uh, rewarding we're getting new turbo with new technologies new radiators intercoolers uh a lot of things are, are happening right now Awesome. So I think that you should keep you guys. You guys should keep uh, a close eye on uh, on our group, and I'll I'll do as many updates as I can. All right. Well, I'll link the Facebook group and uh, your email down here. And uh, awesome, man. Hopefully, we'll get a bunch of people coming to you. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you so much, man. And, anytime. Uh, anytime. Can't wait to start working on your own car. Okay. Yep. Fuel system's going in next week, and we'll start. If you need anything, just let me know and uh, I'll be there, bro. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, Philly and his girl just showed up. They put different wheels on the R. Came to grab some 15 mil spacers. It looks good. Got the stud conversion on there. Hell yeah. I like it. I like it. So my car didn't come with regular mats and they want the rubber mats. So I'm getting rid of these guys and getting these guys. How are you liking the car? I love it, man. How are you liking the car? It's great. <laughs> Freaking impressive. When are you getting tuned? Uh, well, I was talking to Frank this morning and I think we're gonna do it tomorrow. Yeah? yeah. Hell yeah. See that? We'll be twins with the tunes. <laughs> like it. Well, I hope you guys liked this video. Sorry it's a little long. Uh, the conversation with Frank was only supposed to be like five minutes of the video, but um, yeah, a lot of good information there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm super stoked for, like I said, we get the drag strip Saturday, autocross Sunday, and then uh, I'll be doing videos, the fuel, the well, the port injection by itself install, the fuel pump um, install, and those, those will be two videos, and then the tuning, of course, and all that coming next weekend, so stay tuned. Um, I have no real updates on my turbo either. It's probably still going to be like another couple weeks, so it's whatever. We'll uh, we'll get down and dirty with just the, the port injection and uh, see where that takes us until the turbo comes. So, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the flip flop.